This is the Beidou TA900 smartwatch. It is made by Chengdu Space Sound Electronics Limited, which is a supplier of atomic clocks as well as other electronic equipment for the Beidou satellite program as well as Beidou satellite positioning and communication terminals and equipment for the PLA. This TA900 you see here is their latest generation of PLA standard time watches. Albeit the one we have right here is a commercial sale version which is very likely dumbed down from the military version in terms of software. And just a little disclaimer, as of the making of this video, the civilian firmware and software suite for this watch is still under active development, the manufacturer is still releasing a steady stream of updates to the firmware and software suite, and there has been around 3 updates since I've gotten the watch last month and each update has added quite a bit of functionality to the watch as well as more features. So. Do keep in mind that the feature set you see here in the Beta 9 version firmware is still not complete. Alright, with that out of the way, let's take a look at this watch. Alright, so first, let's see what you get in the box that the watch comes in. So obviously, first you have the watch itself. Then you have the charging cable. You also have the quick start guide and an inspection pass certificate. And this is what the charging cable looks like. It's a USB-A to a proprietary charging port connector and it plugs into the backside of the watch. Setting up the watch is pretty simple. You simply plug it in. Turn it on by pressing the back button for 3 seconds. And if the watch is brand new out of the box, you will need to activate it via a phone app. And given the pace of development of the software of the watch, it's very likely that the firmware on the watch that you get out of the box is already out of date. But luckily, updating the watch to the latest firmware is also done via the app and it's also pretty easy. Alright, so let's talk about the basic operations of the watch. It's actually pretty simple. There's only three buttons and a touchscreen. Starting from the top on the right side of the watch, you have the exclusive backlight button. The only function of this button is to activate the backlight and it pretty much does nothing else. Moving down, you have the crown or the knob of the watch, you can press it in and you can also turn it. And moving down, you have the back button. The back button is pretty self-explanatory, in most cases it will back you out of menu options, it will cancel whatever settings you've put in, and in the stopwatch mode, it'll serve as the lap button. And once you've activated the watch initially, it also has a secondary zero rise function. Basically, if you hold that button down for 3 seconds, it will basically reboot the watch and wipe any data you have stored on it. This includes all your fitness data, all your satellite positioning history, all your vitals tracking history, basically anything. This feature might have been implemented with tactical applications in mind, but yeah, just do keep in mind that if you press the button down for 3 seconds on your watch, it will reboot and it will wipe itself. So yeah, be careful not to do that if you don't want to. And here's the control scheme in action. The watch does have an optional lock screen mode that will activate if you haven't touched any of the controls in a few minutes. And to reactivate the controls for the watch, you simply just press the knob down for around 3 seconds. The lock screen mode basically just locks off the controls of the watch after a certain period of inactivity. And while it does slow down the operations of the watch, I find it to be quite necessary because it is possible to accidentally bump the knob and lead to unwanted control inputs. Now back onto the control scheme of the watch. When you're on the home page of the watch like this, turning the knob will basically let you cycle through your vitals tracking, weather forecast, exercise history, and phone notifications menu. Short pressing the knob will get you to the exercise programs menu. Further short presses will let you enter menu options. Turning the knob lets you cycle between and select the different menu options. Pressing back will back you out of it. And this control scheme is also replicated with touchscreen gestures, with swiping up and down being the same as turning the knob, and with swiping right and left respectively substituting short pressing the knob and pressing the back button. 
All right, now let's talk about the external features of the watch. At the front, you have a memory and pixel display protected by a hard sapphire crystal. This display is perhaps also one of the more attractive features of the watch. The MIP display works a little bit like the segmented LCD displays you see on older watches, in that they work primarily by reflecting ambient light. This means that you won't get readability issues with this display in very bright conditions, unlike in OLED watches. And because it's not using a power-intensive backlight, the power consumption of this display is really low. This allows the Beidou to keep its display powered on all the time, and hence gives it an advantage over most other smartwatches that turn the display off to conserve power. And when it gets too dark, you can also turn on a backlight. Now let's move on to some of the negatives of the display. The display unit itself, as well as the means to drive it, seems to have been designed with absolute power efficiency in mind. As such, the display resolution is a mere 260 by 260 and the refresh rate is noticeably low. However, these don't seem to affect the accuracy of the time display nor does it seem to have a significant impact on the usability of the watch. Overall, I think these drawbacks are quite forgivable given that they are on a display that stays on all the time on a watch that has a 30-day rated battery life. Moving on, the case of the watch is made out of 316 Lima grey stainless steel, and the finish on it is pretty durable too. I've banged this watch against elevator doors, I've dropped it, and there is not a single visible scuff or scratch on the watch case or the crystal. Now let's move on to the case back of the watch. The overall finish of the case back has a nice smooth texture that sits really comfortably on your skin. And the two most prominent features on the case back are the vital sensor in the center and the charging port to the side. Overall, the watch case, controls, and the crystal are all sealed off from outside elements, giving the watch a 100 meter water resistant rating. The watch accepts straps of a lug width of 23mm, and the ones that came with the watch are made of a really comfortable silicon. The silicon straps have good elasticity, and when combined with a nice finish on the case back, the whole setup is comfortable enough that you may not even feel the 87.5 gram watch on your wrist as you go about your daily business. And indeed, I've worn this watch to work, I've worn it while driving, I've worn it while exercising, and doing all kinds of stuff. And not once did I feel that the watch was a burden on my wrist. And indeed, I say that this watch is a lot more comfortable due to its straps and its case back compared to many of the mechanical watches I own, despite this watch being heavier than all of them. Now let's talk about the core functionalities of the watch and what sets them apart from those of other watches, namely timekeeping, navigation, as well as exercise and vitals tracking. Now let's start with timekeeping. Like with all digital watches, it can display time in either 12 hour or 24 hour format on its main page. It displays the date, the day of the week, as well as time in hours, minutes, and seconds. However, the seconds indication disappears after a few seconds of inactivity and to bring it back up, you'll either have to flick your wrist or press any of the buttons on the watch. And as for timekeeping itself, let's just say that digital electronic timekeeping has been accurate since the 80s. But what sets this watch apart is its ability to link into the Beidou satellite network. There, it can obtain nanosecond accurate timing from the broadcast of the satellites. And now onto navigation. Currently, I still feel that the navigation feature set of this watch is incomplete, so this is just going to be a first look into it. Once further firmware updates add more navigation functionality to the watch, I'll be sure to update you guys via more videos. But yeah, in terms of hardware, this watch pretty much has everything you need. It's got a Beidou satellite receiver that works pretty well outdoors, or at least decently when you're in a car or when you're in an urban area with densely packed tall buildings. The receiver is capable of continuous positioning and will update the coordinates as you move. And in general, I find it to be precise enough to detect that I've moved even just two steps. However, the satellite receiver won't be able to receive anything if you're indoors in a concrete building or when you're in a tunnel. It does work the best when there are no physical obstructions between you and the satellites. The watch also has a built-in compass that seems decently responsive and accurate. And at this time with the Civilian Beta 9 version of the firmware, all the above gives you some basic route following navigation functionality. You can plan out a route to follow on your smartphone app, then beam it over to the watch via Bluetooth, and when you're navigating the route, the watch will basically show you where you are in relation to the route, as well as indicate any offsets if you deviate from that route. 
And once you finish the navigation session, it will even show you the exact route you took. For unplanned navigation, there is also the exploration mode. This mode lets you place location markers as you move around, and lets you backtrack to a selected marker by providing a compass bearing and a distance to the marker. Unfortunately, the exploration mode does not have a graphical route or marker map, but I feel this is something that will be added soon, given how this exploration mode didn't even exist before the Beta 9 update. Now let's move on to the vitals tracking and the sports functions of the watch. The vital sensor on the case back of the watch will let you test your blood oxygen saturation levels. And when the watch is in normal operating mode, it will also lock your heart rate every 10 minutes for 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. Additionally, the watch will also calculate your average heart rate for each day. And if you wear the watch while sleeping, it will also measure your resting heart rate. The indications here are currently blank because I'm not wearing the watch while filming this. And the reason why only 3 days have been locked here is because I accidentally zeroized the watch by holding down the back button for too long 3 days ago. And from measuring your heart rate variability, this watch can also calculate your stress levels. Higher values mean that you are more stressed, and lower values mean that you are more relaxed. And it does work. I have noticed that it does go up when I'm in a meeting. And the spike you see here is from when I'm running 10k on the treadmill. And here it also locks your overall stress levels since you started wearing the watch. And next, we have what can be best described as vitality. This is also calculated from heart rate variability and basically indicates how tired or energetic you are. The higher the value, the more energetic you are, and the lower the value, the more tired you are. In general, it does seem to work, as intense exercise, labor, or even long office hours does seem to make it drop, and resting and sleeping does seem to make it recover. Now onto the sports functions of the watch. This watch is heavily marketed towards the outdoor sportsman, and the sports programs do cover 10 of the PLA standard physical training regimens. The sports mode covers the typical aerobic exercises such as running, swimming, and cycling, as well as the typical anaerobic exercises such as planks and freestyle muscle workouts. Once the exercise mode has been activated, it will continuously track, display, and log your vitals, as well as track and display your exercise session progress. For example, if you're running, this will be in kilometers, and while I have found that its outdoors running distance tracking is pretty accurate as it's aided by Beidou positioning, its treadmill running distance tracking is a bit off. I found that without Beidou tracking, the treadmill running distance calculated from the watch's gyro and accelerometer data falls consistently short of what is actually displayed by the treadmill. The watch also logs every single exercise session that you've completed, and you can cycle through the main menu to view your exercise after action reports. If you're running outdoors, this will include a satellite tracking trace route of the route you ran, as well as the usual distance, calories, and time. It will also log your heart rate throughout the exercise session, as well as indicate how much time you have spent with your heart rate in the warm-up, the aerobic, the endurance, the anaerobic, and the upper limit phases. It also shows how tiring the exercise was for you in terms of percent vitality expenditure. It also logs your exercise pace, as well as running stride information. It also shows you the aerobic or anaerobic benefits or improvements you got from the exercise session. And if you're running in a circuit, it will also show you the lap timing results. And so far as of beta 9 version of the firmware, that's pretty much it for the sports and vitals tracking functions of the watch. Now, what if you actually want to wear this watch into combat? Well, this watch does have a combat clock mode that will keep the seconds display on all the time, and will also have a second running time display that you can use as a mission timer, or as a common synchronized source of timing between units. This second running time display is configurable in its starting time and in its clock running speed. And another feature is the Stealth or MCON mode. This disables the automatic backlight trigger, the built-in sound making buzzer, and disables any RF transmission from the watch. This also wipes any personal and location data on the watch, so it does give you a 10 second confirmation window to cancel this operation. Alright, that is all I have on the watch so far. It is still not feature complete, so I didn't really want to make this video too in depth. But once firmware updates make this watch fully featured, I will be sure to update you guys with a more in-depth video. But for now, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great time.